This video is brought to you by Brilliant. This is my office slash second studio desk setup. Unlike my asymmetrical jam-packed home studio corner, this end of 2022 iteration is much more balanced and prettier looking. In this video, I'll take you on a tour of it and showcase the different components and as well as last time, I'll also share what I don't like about each item I feature. Of course, all the links will be in the description below, so let's get to it. The desk is a mix between IKEA's ROG collaboration mixed with a tabletop that was provided to me by a friend of mine. The black tabletop that initially came with the IKEA desk scratched way too quickly. What's worse, it collected dust and skin marks like crazy. You can see what I'm talking about in my earlier Batman inspired desk setup. Luckily, this wood finished tabletop is fantastic, being larger and 10 times better looking. The desk structure is exceptionally sturdy and I have to credit IKEA and ROG for creating a great looking frame. The gaming graphics are inconspicuous and are not in the way of creating a more minimal looking setup. There are four programmable buttons for height presets and the controller comes with a USB-A charging port which is fantastic. Even more awesome is the included cable tray underneath the desk for all the cable and charger mess. The motors of the legs are plenty powerful and very quiet. The size of the tabletop is much better than the one that I use in my ironically much busier home studio. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. Overall, I'm delighted with this desk. The only thing missing here is casters. This is something to work on and improve sooner rather than later. Next up is the Balolo shelf part of Balolo's setup cockpit. This time the shelf is an all black finish which in combination with a tabletop is a chef's kiss. The shelf is equipped with 10 accessories. On the right side I have the laptop dock which regular viewers have seen plenty in my recent desk setup guide episodes. Looking at the front I have a MagSafe charger and dock for my iPhone 14 Pro and iPad iPhone stand which I use for my tablet. On the other side I have a tray organizer with three catch-all trays each of which holds various bits and pieces of tech and gear like USB adapters. I have two cable organizers on the back to better route cables and a headphone stand. If you want to know what could have been better with the shelf system check out my other home studio video where I also talk about my MacBook Pro, which I'll omit this time to protect my regular viewers from complete and utter boredom. Aside from my MacBook Pro, the 11 inch iPad Pro is my second most used device on this desk. It is my go-to writing, browsing, researching and entertaining device for everything else besides video editing. I try to use it more and more in a desk setup environment, yet I'm still struggling. If you want to find out why, you can check out my iPad in a desk setup guide video, which I'll link below. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Even if I don't use the iPad as a computer, I still place it on the Balolo stand as my sidekick to my MacBook, which is the ultimate combo. With the help of Sidecar and Universal Control, I can be very productive using both iPad OS and Mac OS in tandem. What I don't like about the iPad Pro is probably clear by now. Apple wants to make it an excellent tool to be used in a desk setup, but it's not there yet. Next up is the Apple Studio Display. These are the most gorgeous 27 inches of 5K resolution I use daily. Although this monitor does not boast the mini LED tech featured in the XDR display, it is still the benchmark for picture quality. Aesthetically, it looks beautiful on both sides and for those who might be wondering, I purchased it with the extra expensive stand before my introduction to this beautiful shelf by Balolo. Nevertheless, I'm still happy with the stand since it allows me to push it down and achieve this nice floating effect. I have a dedicated video on this product if you're interested. Now, if I have to point out what I don't like about it, it will be the price. I don't mind the bezels at all. I know some people are complaining about them, but the price makes it very difficult to recommend. Unlike my home studio setup, I don't require dock and speakers here. The studio display sounds as good as my powered counter speakers at home. With the additional three USB-C ports on the back, I am covered in terms of ports, although a fourth USB-C would have been marvelous since I now have to plug in my mouse dongle in the Mac directly, which is not a deal breaker, but Still, on top of the studio display, I have placed my Xiaomi screen bar. I'm a huge advocate of screen bars because they help stay focused and reduce eye strain from other lights, something I find very useful, especially in winter times 
when the day is shorter. Like my favorite BenQ screen bar Halo, the Xiaomi bar boasts high quality but no rear light. This is ideal for this setup since there's another desk opposite of mine. There's a rotating control knob in the package that I can use to control the intensity of the light and the color temperature. Fun fact, the removable batteries have never been replaced ever since I purchased it around two years ago. If there was one thing to complain about here, it is the fact that it covers the webcam. If I were to use it for a meeting, I might have to move it to the side for the duration of the call. Regarding peripherals, I use the Logitech G502X mouse, which as I mentioned in my recent desktop guide, is the perfect mix between a light gaming mouse and a productivity one like the MX Master. It's very well sculpted, it uses USB-C and has plenty of customizable buttons. I use only two side buttons to move between my screens, so 11 more buttons to play with. If you want to learn more about my mice collection, you can check out my peripherals episode, which I'll link below. The keyboard of choice here is the Keychron K3 Pro. This low profile mechanical keyboard is absolutely fantastic. It not only looks great, but it helps me write faster. It's very satisfying to use and the blue switches are just amazing to listen to. Although it's RGB, I keep the lights off to preserve the battery. Just like in my home studio setup, I also have a secondary Apple Magic Keyboard that most often than not, you can see resting on my iPad stand. I use it as a backup keyboard since it lasts over a month when not used as a primary one. And most of all, I use it for Touch ID button. Honestly, if there was a dedicated Touch ID dongle to purchase from Apple, I would buy it in a heartbeat because I need it that much and it saves that much time, even if it costs an arm and a leg. As usual, my mouse pad of choice is the Enough Pad, which if you're new here is my own product. I love it because it's black, it's made from recycled materials, and it's the perfect mix between a leather mouse pad and a gaming pad. It's not as smooth as a gaming pad, yet it's nowhere near as sticky as a leather one. At the same time, it's soft on the wrist and much more forgiving than a wool felt pad. If you want to have a chance to win a pad, leave a like on this video and drop a comment below telling me which is your mouse of choice and why. In the first week of 2023, right before my birthday, I will announce two winners on my social media channels. If you want to double your chances to win, do the same on my home studio setup video, where I have a different question for you. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this one. Since I'm not alone in the office studio, I often rely on headphones and I grab the AirPods Max in those cases. Having the best noise cancelling and most of all transparency mode, I can wear them for hours. At the same time, even if I don't use them with a cable, I can witness little to no lag while editing. One complaint with them is some recent connection issues I've been experiencing. And there's a construction site close to me, so I suspect that might be the reason for it, for such interruptions, but We'll see. By the way, the headphones are usually plugged in to charge all the time and rested on the headphone stand that I mentioned earlier. Just as I like to keep my tech up to date and my desk set up as optimal as possible, I like to keep my knowledge and skills as relevant as I can. If you work or want to work in STEM, you know how fast changing everything is. That's why I am a fan of Brilliant. It offers a huge collection of courses and lessons that gets expanded every month. One that I really enjoyed was Computer Science Fundamentals. It teaches computational problem solving through real life examples involving bakers, librarians, and laundry, which in a professional environment translates into efficiency, splitting up a task between several team members, solving a problem faster with more storage, and so on. The best part is that Brilliant's hands-on approach lets you learn by doing. You solve all the fun puzzles, but at the same time you learn to think. The low pressure feel of it works for lifelong learners at any age. To get started with the app for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash this is e or click on the first link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. If you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out my home studio setup episode and my desk setup guide series, where we talk all about essentials and inessentials in the world of setups. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.